Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Demon Overlord. It is a pleasure to see you all again today. For all my newcomers, welcome. For all my classic regular viewers, welcome back. Now today we're going to be going over some miniatures once again. And today we're going to go back to a company that I've had in the past. I reviewed them before. And I reviewed them on a set of miniatures that was based on a skeleton, goblin, orc, and what was the fourth one? And zombies, that's it, zombies. Now, it was the company Citadel Black. And as we can see here, I have returned to purchase another set of their miniatures. The only reason I did was because I saw this on Amazon a little while ago, and I noted there for about a month or two now, and maybe about three months. And I keep sitting there looking at it going, hmm, maybe it has promise to it. Maybe. Maybe I should get a set and take a look at them. Well... As always, these things do go pretty quick on there. They always seem to run out and disappear and then come back stock. So people are buying them. So I figured uh, eh, there must be someone either happy with them. I don't really see many reviews for them on there. So I figured I'd get this and review it. Make more content for the channel, I guess. So let's get into these bad boys and get started. So wait, but first, before we do that, actually, just want to get that tab up because it's a pain. You can see they actually did increase the, uh, what do you call the packaging? Unlike the older one where I got it, where it was just a literal blank box, a white little small box with Citadel Black on it. All it had was the small, or had like basically, that was all it was on it. Nothing else. It wasn't even like a dark colored box. It was just a simple white box. Now, the reason why this set interested me was because it came with some interesting creatures. We had a lich, which I assumed was going to be some type of, like, maybe big undead, but whatever. We had a dragon, a giant sea serpent. I know, I think on the box, I'll read what they are in a second. And then we had a beholder. The beholder and the dragon being the most interesting with the, I think, lich being the backup. And then the sea serpent being more of a, eh, nice little follow-up. Now, features are highly features for highly detailed miniatures designed for D&D &D and other tabletop games. Well, they're 50 millimeter, which that does say they are. Visualize the strength of the creatures with the large 50 millimeter bases. Okay, I mean, personally, when I start thinking of the strongest creatures, I start thinking too gargantuan or huge or colossal, but whatever. Each mini is ready to play and ready to paint. I doubt that very much. I'll always prime my miniatures before I paint them. It's just a safety thing with me. But, so inside we have a rock-fed beholder, a stormweave dragon, a deep sea basilisk and a death creep lich. Hmm. And unlike the other box, this one actually does have some type of website on here. And I'll, I'll read it just because you can find it. It is www.citadel.black. So not dot com. Hmm. That's different. For more tabletop accessories. Might look into it. We'll see how these things uh, stack up. Just through the back here to show like the uh, actual contents part. There we go. Now let's get into these bad boys. Now I will say I did open this before only because I was disappointed in one factor when I got this, and that was the miniatures, my dragon and beholder, and their acrylic little stands they are on, they were broken. That was really, really saddening. Now, I'm not completely mad at Citadel. It looks like, I mean, after all, this does have a second layer, so they must have been pretty well secured. I'm assuming it could have happened from the USPS handling it roughly or maybe it got bounced off a package and broke we'll just throw it up there to things happen that's why i didn't want to do a whole return and send another so let's uh go over the flexibility stuff right now i have you there so let's see we're gonna start with the hmm, let's start with this i know one that's gonna be flimsy so let's get them all out so we can see here on the little board now, i did already fix these two like i said they were broken off so i actually had to take my old Time for the uh, Crafter's Tool Dremel Tool to give them a little deeper hole, cleaned out the old acrylic, and basically put them on this one. Now, based on the plastic, because this is obviously a plastic, it's not a resin, because if it was resin, this that right there would have snapped it. But this is pretty strong on this guy. His little tassel, even his crown are pretty solid. The spear, or I guess, I would call it a long scepter mace, because it's got like a big mace end on it. And it's flexible, but it's still got enough strength that I feel that if you bend it too far, it might snap. But it does help probably combat the, what I like to call, bendy weapon syndrome. The basilisk, 
pretty solid, actually. He's pretty solid. There's not much wiggling, moving parts on except maybe the end of his tail. But not bad. They actually do actually, oh, they actually have the embroidery underneath. So that's pretty cool. Take a look at that. If it can show up there. I might have to put it on the camera thing later. That's fine. But the beholder. Now let's see how his, his little ear or little eyeballs are there. Okay. Not bad. The tongue is a little bit of wiggle. Good thing after I punched a hole through it so I could put him back in there and didn't rip his tongue off with my Dremel. Thank goodness. Hmm. Now the beholder is interesting. Now, I am going to say this right now. None of these sculpts are completely unseen. I have seen these sculpts before on websites such as Etsy. I think even if you go to like some of those like uh, free sites, they're available there. So I don't know if Citadel picked them up there or whatever, but I have seen all these models before. The dragon, the base of the dragon is different because I've seen the dragon just on a simple, plain, flat base. So the rocks on there are pretty nice. A little rock outcropping is cool. He's like taking off from or he's flying above. My dragon's a little bit more level to the base as he was before. I couldn't get the uh, him to pivot back in the air, so it's kind of more like he's flying over it, but whatever. Still works. I actually kind of like him a little more that way. With him upwards more, it makes him more like he gets snagged on something or break, or more like a break, as he must have done. Basilisk is really cool. So, let's get into the actual box, and we're going to go into the my photo box over here, and we're going to take a close-up look at these bad boys. Join me, shall we? Here is a quick shot of the bottom of the Deep Sea Basilisk. They all have the same style of bottom, but as you can see, they actually have gone and put a nice little touch-up on the bottom there. That nice little embroidery on the bottom really makes it look nice. I got to give them credit. That's a nice touch-up. The old Citadel Black I got were definitely not that well nice on the bottom of the base, so that's pretty cool. Nice touch. and makes it feel a little more quality, so let's move on to the actual mini itself. So the first miniature we're going to go over here is the Deep Sea Basilisk. Now, an interesting fact about the DC Basilisk, if you have noticed that WizKids is going, has, I think, just released them or releasing the new Critical Role miniatures, and in that set, they actually have a Deep Sea Basilisk. And I don't know if these guys were trying to maybe beat them to the punch of it, because I know this was around technically before that released, but it's actually a really nice miniature. I mean, the details on this guy are pretty nice. He's a really big, thick, sea snake-looking creature. Now, I don't know what a water basilisk or deep sea basilisks or the water basilisk would be. I don't know if they're related to the land based basilisk, but they supposedly do the same type of thing. It's just like the difference is that one's more like a snake and one's more like a lizard. Now, I gotta say, this thing is pretty cool. I don't understand the giant jewel that he's sitting on because I don't know many giant gemstones like that sticking up from the bottom of oceans or anything. But, I mean, it is the world of DD, it is fantastical and fantasy. So, you know what? That wouldn't be super outside the box, I suppose. The head is really nice. I actually like that you don't see it in the front. He looks a little derpier in the front, but when you see him on the side, it gives him that unique jaw profile of like an angler fish or some of those deep sea fish, like ribbon fish, and those extendable jaws they all seem to have to engulf their prey. So it's really interesting. But I guess for a creature that eats stone creatures like the basilisk, it would make sense to consume that stone body. He has to swallow the best he can to get them inside and let his stomach acids do the rest. So pretty cool. Comparatively to other serpentine creatures, this is pretty useful, and it's not too unmultipurpose at the same time. We could use this thing for a giant moray eel, a giant sea snake. It has multiple uses, and depending on the paint job, it could look fantastic. So really cool, Citadel. I got to give you credit. Really cool on this one. Moving on. So here we have the Death Creep Leet or Death Creep Lich. Sorry about that. And I gotta say, he's pretty interesting looking himself. He has a lot of details going on there. He has that sort of wispiness to him that I think is very nice in a miniature. Gives him that flow, as you can see, all the little tassels and stuff coming off of his uh, robe. He does sort of give me a poltergeist feel, but maybe that was what they were trying to go with, since he is a death creep creature. And the mace there looks really nice. His weapon looks really good. The bendy weapon syndrome is really minimal on this guy, so I think you're going to get a lot of cool look. His sculpt itself on his face is pretty cool. And let's, sorry, the camera's adjusting. And he looks pretty nice. He does have a downward look, which is good because he's a large creature. He is going to most likely be very large compared to your characters and looking down at them. So pretty cool. I mean, the, even the weird warping sort of bend going on there, it looks like, you know, that's the end of the back and then it goes down to legs, which then warp to the lower part of the legs. So it's not completely un impossible for body movement, but it's definitely different and interesting. And I like that. And it's interesting to see a lich that can really be humanoid but be this big and more imposing so pretty cool very nice citadel very nice so next up here we have the storm weave dragon now 
comparatively to other dragons, this one follows more along the old school style that WizKids went for their young dragons. When, if you notice now, when WizKids released the unpainted young dragons, they all are on large base or huge bases, but they have the large size, like little terrain underneath for the unpainted versions. And then nowadays, WizKids has been releasing just these bigger, one base size bigger, and then having a second ring inside to represent the true size of the creature. But if you compare this guy to many of the other dragons of the current, this guy is small for a young dragon, but that's not exactly a bad thing. I always like to see it more as maybe that's the young, the uh, wormling transition into the young stage, like so it's early young dragon. And then later, the ones like from WizKids currently are more like the young dragon on the cusp of becoming adult, or like you could use it as an adult for a fill-in. But now anyway, this guy is pretty interesting. Now this dragon, I do recognize because this is literally the same exact model style as the pathfinder's red dragon which has that very big spiky boy the sharp spikes in the sides of the tail the spikes all over the wings this guy is definitely inspired from that dragon now i don't know if it's i can't obviously say they ripped off the design because i mean there's been millions of designs of dragons over the years so it's not like pathfinder made that version specifically i mean dnd's red dragon is also very iconic so but you know many dragons have a similar look to it through history second let's drink tea Now, I do gotta say I like him. He's pretty simple, pretty small. I like the rock outcropping on the bottom there, and the way I fixed him to be a little more level, I actually kind of like the profile more than it was, or what it was supposed to be based on the box. Yeah, I had to give him another Dremel tool up the... How much I had to say? He had to get Dremeled in the crotch. God dang it. Because um, that's where they put his peg base. I don't know why companies keep putting those there. Really poor choicing of place. But very cool nonetheless, and I'm not going to paint him as a red dragon, though, so I'll probably paint him as something else. So... Spoilers, guys, if you guys want to have an idea that you think I should paint this guy as a purple dragon, a blue dragon, a gray dragon, the rare fang dragon, go ahead and comment in the comments down below. And make sure you hit that like button, guys. It helps let YouTube know that you like my videos, and they'll share it more often. Also, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I definitely recommend doing so. If you want to get access to the sweet content I go and all the nice notifications for when I pop out new videos, that way you're not out of the loop, and you guys can enjoy. Now, we're going to move on to The Beholder. Now, here we have the Rot-Fed Beholder. Now, comparative to the Beholder size to base, if you compare them to something like the WizKids unpainted Beholders that are hard to get your hands on because every time they, ever, they always sell out really fast, this guy is pretty small. But those tentacles on top for his eye stalks are very long. Now, I don't know if that's because maybe because his body is so shriveled, he looks more like a, almost like a death tyrant. As a matter of fact, if you really needed a death tyrant badly, you could use him as a replacement, but you'd have to find a way to get those eye stalks off and just cut them off, I guess, and say he's more skeletal. But he is very slim in design. It is a rot-fed beholder, so maybe this is a beholder that someone's using to guard their treasure. They've found a way to keep him contained. And they feed him very minimal or rotted food, and that's why he's just so malnourished looking. I mean, the size of the jaw there, you see, like, splitting in his gum lines and such, which is very unique and interesting. And I don't hate it. I mean, it's very interesting. You could even paint this guy to be a zombie beholder if you really wanted to. But then he has that cool little feature of treasure on his base. I do like that. Like the dragon, he gets a cool little base effect going on, or the deep sea basilisk. He's got some cool little treasure. Not much, but a little bit. He's got a little chest. Which you could say, like, maybe if you uh, killed him and the group kills him, that's what the DM goes for. You can see a little bit of the acrylic base sticking in the mouth there a little bit. That's from where I had to fix him and give him a little Dremel hole through so he could sit on his base again. But he's really interesting. i got to give credit. Now, like I've said before, guys, none of these um, designs are unseen to me. I've seen them all before. I do shop on Etsy on occasion, shop around there to see what, you know, the 3D printing community has been getting around to making and selling. And I've seen this design sculpt before. Now, the one I think in the design sculpt I've seen on Etsy, they're a bit beefier and bigger. But they might have gone small on purpose to make this more of like a sort of a scrawny, malnourished beholder. And it's very interesting, and I do appreciate it, and I do like it. Very nice, Citadel. In the end, I'd have to say these miniatures are very nice. Other than the broken part, but that, could, like I said, could have been the Postal Service's issue. I have to say, these things have an interesting place in a miniature collector's you know, inventory. So moving on to final words. So in conclusion, I would like to say these miniatures are really nice. And I would recommend that if you are looking for a couple new miniatures to throw into your inventory for minis out there, they're not bad. The plastic is pretty solid. 
Like, even the bases, though they are the boring style, more straight up peg base, this would be a little bit of a swoop. I wish it was a little thicker, obviously, for more stability. But, you know, they have great stability, great strength. The plastic quality is not bad. I'm assuming they're going to take paint really well. Oh, just, oh, man, that face in the death lodge. Whenever I look close at it, I just see that creepy jester face like that. <laughs> Ugh, creepy boy. And I got to say, it's very unique, very interesting. I definitely recommend adding them to your collection. If you can get a hold of them for a good price, uh, 20 bucks doesn't sound too bad for a nice set of four big boys like this to throw out there at your party. They cover all the different areas, the undead, water, caves, and dragons being anywhere. So pretty cool. And I definitely give this at least a four stars. It's definitely worth adding to your collection if you can get it for a good price. Hopefully yours don't come with broken and you have to actually do repairs, but things happen, guys. I understand. Postal services can make mistakes. Well, anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. And have a great one, guys, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.